What's going on guys? Today we're throwing out the Guggen Squad dart for the first time. Let's go. So you guys have probably seen a lot of hype on the new Guggen Squad dart. This is essentially a fluke. This has uh, caught my PB in the past of almost 7 pounds. Flukes are absolutely devastating and now we have the Guggen Squad take on it. We're going to break it out of the packaging, we're going to rig it up, we're going to fish it, talk about everything you need to know. But first, a quick word from our sponsor of today's episode mystery tackle box guys if you all are unfamiliar you can try mystery tackle box with the link in the description for as low as ten dollars what they're gonna do is hook you up with new baits every single month at your door I have the pro box this month this is exactly what we have got we have a deep diving flat sided crankbait perfect for the colder water temperatures again you're also gonna get these baits catered to the season not just the area you're in now we have a small finesse jig, slowing things down with a smaller size jig for the colder temperatures. I dig it. We've also got some small hooks. These are little guys. I'm betting there's some drop shot baits in here, or maybe there's some smaller plastics that they want you to rig up with these. Uh, wide gap, 3 aught, 2 pack, sick. Spear point performance hooks. Okay. You've got a what's inside the box as well as a little pamphlet with tips and tricks on fishing your baits every single month. So this is truly a fantastic gift for the fishermen in your life. If you know somebody who's not sure what tackle to grab off the shelf or they just want to try something new every month, go ahead and grab a mystery tackle box. Next up, we have got some smaller crawfish baits. These are going to go crazy in the ponds around here. Also the lakes, colder temperatures, slowing it down with that smaller profile. Absolutely going to get it done and probably rig them up on those hooks in there potentially. Now, we've also got some Sakoshi bugs, one of my favorite Ned Rig baits with the Elastec type of material. So stretchy, it's going to last you catch after catch after catch. Large mouth go for them, small mouth go for them. This is just one of the best Ned Rig baits out there. You can also even do this rig drop shot. I've done it before, caught some fish. Plenty of opportunity there. A couple more baits here and we're on to the Guggen Squad. Dart. We also have some Weston Company stick worms. Check these out. They are a darker blue color. They're five inches, five pieces in here. You can't go wrong with that stick bait, the Senko style. You're going to catch fish. Wacky rig these things, Texas rig them. You can rig them a multitude of different ways. In fact, we'll talk a little bit more about it in today's video. But you got some worms covered in this month's box, as well as a shallow diving crankbait. Perfect. We've got a banger. This guy is going to dive two to five feet. Perfect for hitting the shallow rock and the ponds near you. Perfect for just really covering water and trying to catch more big winter bass. And we're also getting into springtime. You want to talk about covering water and catching big fish. This is one of those baits that should literally always be tied on. Just cranking along the bank and reeling in some big old bass. So there's also a sticker in here and you've got opportunity to measure and tag Mystery Tackle Box to win other prizes every single month, guys. So try your first box for as low as 10 bucks. Now it is time to break out the new Guggen Squad darts and see what these things are really made of. Let's go. Looks like we might have to place all to ourselves. All right, y'all, it's been a while since I've fished this pond, but I came by the other day and it was looking crystal clear. Here she is, y'all. Guggen Squad dart with some cool styling cues, almost like a textured side here. Little fins, some nice eye detail. Also got a slot for your hook. Oh my goodness, guys, it looks so good. Clear, grass, perfection. So the new Guggen Squad soft plastic jerk bait, you guys. This is gonna be insane. You fish these things with a single hook. I believe I've got like a four aught hammer hook right here. And I like the hammer hooks specifically for these baits because they're kind of low profile. You've got those EWG hooks that stick out a little bit more, but I really like the way this one sits pretty flush with the body. Now this is the largest size, the seven inch. It's all I could get my hands on. Not many people have these right now. I believe this is just the standard watermelon red flake color, but there's gonna be a lot of color options. My favorite is gonna be an all white pattern. That has uh, been what's caught me my most fish, biggest fish. Also, I like to see that white color in the water and watch these things get eaten. They're one of the most fun bites, and I'll talk to you more about that here in just a second. But rod, reel, gear, what do we have here? I'd recommend about, you know, somewhere between 12 and 17 pound fluorocarbon because you are going to have to set the hook pretty good on this. And this gives you an opportunity to fish something like a jerk bait without treble hooks. So you can really get closer to the cover and you might have to rip some bass out of there. So think about that. I would say something like 15 pound fluorocarbon. Fluoro is going to be essential on this bait though because the thing is, you want it to have that slow sink. You want to fish these things weightless oftentimes. You rig it up just like a Texas rig. And you're going to be working it slow with long pauses. And these fish are going to bite it on that pause. So pop, pop stop 
pop, pop, give it a little, pop it on some slack line, you'll be all set. I'd say something like a seven foot medium heavy all purpose rod is gonna be best suited for this guy right here with a fast tip. You kinda want that fast action. If you've got a little bit of a flimsy tip, that's gonna work good for working those jerk baits with the treble hooks, but when you've got this one solid hook, you might want something a little bit more firm to plant that hook and also going for your casting, something like a seven foot medium heavy fast action is gonna be perfect. For the reel, I'm probably least concerned about that, but I am throwing a Metanium DC. We've got some windy conditions today, and if I'm throwing it into the wind and it is weightless, there's gonna be opportunity for me to get a backlash, and the digital chip inside of this reel is gonna help prevent a little bit of that. So, got a Metanium DC for the reel. Something like a seven foot or seven foot two medium heavy fast action rod is gonna be fantastic, and then we have our bait here with the hammer hook on 15 pound fluorocarbon. Let's go ahead and make the first few casts, guys. Real quick, I did mention this was the largest size. There's also gonna be a five inch and a seven inch model, so you really cater it to whatever size bait fish you see in your ponds. It might size up when you're going for those big fish, and also the five inch is gonna be very comfortable for getting a lot of bites when the fish are finicky. Now check out this hook slot in the top. You can literally just push the hook right down in it, and now you're effectively weedless, so you can work right through the thick stuff and not be getting caught up, so don't think you're gonna get snagged with this guy a lot. Let's go ahead and make that first cast and see what's up. Crystal clear, you guys. I can see straight to the bottom here. A lot of grass exactly where you want to break these things out they're really not making a lot of noise and there's a lot of other baits that you could use to cause more vibration in the water so what that means is this is a clear water tactic and it's kind of a slower presentation when this bait is paused in between your pops it's going to literally just sit there and suspend and fall ever so slowly and so it gives those fish a, a lot of opportunity to come in from a further distance take a look at it and decide to strike it with its realistic look now if you were fishing some stained water i would just go ahead and throw something like your spinner bait your chatter bait and you're gonna go ahead and draw the fish in with a little bit more vibration in the water as well as maybe some flash this again clear water spectacular all right I don't want to scare any of these fish away by standing up too tall and casting a big shadow but let me go ahead and make a cast from up here Dang, this thing is looking good but guys what I'm realizing is the wind is blowing right at me and it's like in the 40s today I'm gonna go on the other side where the trees are kind of sheltering the wind and I can face the Sun a little bit and we'll talk to you guys about the action here well on my way over to the other side I noticed something here that is a good key point to bring up so it with this dart there's a whole lot of thick grass right in front of me almost to the surface and I want to get as close to that grass line as I can fishing this bait to where I think these bass are ambushing little fish that are inside of this stuff and I wouldn't do that if I was fishing something like a standard jerk bait or maybe a crank bait or just other treble hook style baits that could get caught much easier. This being weedless, I have complete confidence casting into a spot where maybe a lot of other folks wouldn't cast just because there's so much grass right here. And not just grass, but thick stuff. This is like the stems of what I'm casting into. And you will just totally be breaking off baits and getting caught and snagged all day long if you're throwing something like a treble hook bait again the perfect time to throw a soft plastic jerk bait. Now let's try and make it to the other side. I'm getting colder by the second. I need some shelter from this breeze, please. Here we go, this is nice. It's a nice little slow taper, not too deep. These fish might be uh, chasing it up from the depths as I work it in here. Less wind, oh my gosh. And guys, when you have a little bit of slack line and you pop it, that's gonna cause this dart to go back and forth nice and erratically. If you have a little bit less slack, like if it's super tight when you pop it, Sometimes there's no slack, it's just gonna come right towards you. I know I'm working it fast and it was kind of on the surface there, but you kind of get the point with that retrieve. It just comes right back at you. You really want it darting all over the place. So, a little bit of slack in the line, give it a firm smack against that slack. Maybe once, maybe twice, maybe three times, and then let it sit for a second. It's gonna simmer gonna slow down a little bit that's usually when the bass are gonna come and strike the bait now with this seven inch size it's actually got some decent weight to it I'm not sure the exact weight on this guy but you can cast even into the wind pretty dadgum confidently I mean it it gets out there so don't worry about uh, casting into a little bit of breeze with this guy right here in the slightest if you're down with that five inch size I'd say you might need to be careful you might need to tighten up your tension make sure the bait drops slowly and also work with your brakes to maybe uh, dial them a little bit higher than normal with some of your like maybe quarter ounce texas rigs or half ounce jigs you know you can cast those things a mile even in the wind now this guy right here when you drop down to that five inch size you're gonna have to be careful to not get those birds nests on your bait caster reels now i mentioned earlier how i like the shad colors the white colors because what happens with this guy right here is if you're fishing it with polarized glasses i've got the uh, the gill goggles on you'll see these darts just subsurface and you'll notice as soon as the white disappears that a fish has probably chomped your bait because you're working it close to the surface and then it goes away and you're like oh okay set the hook oh bass looking at it bass looking at it 
He got it. What's up guys, get ready for part. So the visuals are pretty key when I fish a bait like this. Now, with this watermelon red flake, sure it's nice and natural, but I can't see it against the grass backdrop here inside this pond. And so what that is meaning is I am a lot more clueless on whether I have a bite. So how you're gonna detect it is of course, obviously if the fish grabs it and starts running with it, but a lot of times with these, they might grab it and come at you. You've got a little slack in the line, so you're not feeling it too much until you go for that next pop and you realize there's some weight on there and you're like, oh my God, and you gotta set the hook. So <laughs> flukes can be a ton of fun to fish. But again, that is why I really like those brighter colors specifically something like a solid white pattern you're going to be able to see those hits almost 100 percent of the time and it's just so killer you're popping it you're popping it you pause it and you see that white disappear go for the hook set too much fun all right y'all before the sun goes down we didn't give ourselves too much time to catch a fish today but ryan rigged to show up check him out in the description you guys see us out all the time together and wouldn't you know we're back at it again and he's got the five inch size check that out dudes five inch versus seven inch. Now I've caught a lot more fish on a bait like this in a five inch size than a seven, but you're gonna attract those bigs with that seven. And then of course get more bites with something like this five, presumably. Oftentimes you finesse it down, you size it down and you'll get more of those hits. I think we're uh, throwing the same color. This is, what did you say it was? Something crawl? California. California crawl. So I called it watermelon red flake cause that's what it looks like, but I think it's California crawl. It's got a little black flake in there. It's that dark green. And uh, they're looking good, y'all. We're just waiting to see if we can get a fish. And if we don't get any, I'll hit y'all with a quick recap back at the house. All right, guys, and that concludes our first impressions of the new fluke style bait from Guggen Baits. That's right, the dart, man. I cannot wait to fish this thing in spring, summer, fall. It's all gravy, but winter, the bites are a little slow. We know this. If y'all want to check out one of my best days of fishing ever, I actually catch my PB as well. Previous PB, not my current. But it was like six and a half, six and three quarter pounds. I have two videos for you guys. It's from the same day of footage. We just caught so many fish. I think I was up to almost a hundred by the end of the day that I couldn't put it all in one video. They're both linked in the description, part one and part two fishing primarily the Zoom Salty Super Fluke, and this is gonna be my go-to this year as it is the latest and greatest from Guggen Baits. Can't wait to get a hold of some other colors, but I'll leave you guys with that. We have got more crazy videos coming your way, so be on the lookout, and also, I've got those two down there in the description for you guys, so if you want to uh, watch me go crazy with catches in the midst of this winter slumber the bass seem to be on, check those videos out, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Drop a like if you want, bye. <gasps>